Dear students, let us start the discussion on today's newspaper that is 1st January 2018. Women can perform Hajj alone, Prime Minister. As on today, if woman has to go to Hajj pilgrimage, a male guardian has to accompany her. Government is going to change the rules so that women alone can make an Hajj pilgrimage. Government of India is also looking for making necessary arrangements. And the next is, Ultras target CRPF camp kill five Jawans. In this, Jaisi E. Mahmud, a terrorist, they have targeted CRPF Jawans. This year, if you observe organized violence, the violence from Naxals has decreased. On the other hand, terror violence has increased in India, especially the attacks on the armored forces have increased in India. Rajni Khan takes the plunge finally. Here, I am not going to talk about Rajni Khan or his style of politics. What I can put it as this way: the leadership styles. One important style is transactional leadership. Either it is M G R, J L L I T A. They are known for their transactional style of leadership. This transactional style is closely connected with the charismatic leadership. So here, a charisma. When I say it, a leader's ability to attract the masses towards him. A transactional leadership is his vision makes his followers to cross their personal limitations and to sacrifice their personal goals for a larger goal the leader has envisioned for them. So, a transactional leadership and charismatic leadership is intricately connected with movies. So that's why in South India, movie stars are able to make a big impact in politics. The next is on another New Year's Day. This article is about the address of Mahatma Gandhi in Ahmedabad in 1918. According to him, the three basic requirements that has to be fulfilled for every citizen they are clean air, clean water, safe water, and then uh, grain. That is food security. This is what is the objective of Swaraj according to Gandhi ji. Remember carefully. All these three things are also part of DPSP. DPSP are meant to provide substantive rights to citizens. These substantive rights are in essential to create a healthy living in the society. So, the DPSP, Swaraj, and clean air, safe water, and grain are all interconnected to each other. So now, if we carefully observe, these three are getting deprived. and we are going to face a horrible future if we do not correct them now coming to air india is the third large emitter of the gases after us after china and us so because of this carbon emissions there is climate change erratic monsoons etc it is worst affecting indian agriculture it means these three factors are connected to each other here india signed the paris climate pact according to this india has to reduce its emission intensity by 33 to 35 percent by 2030 over 2005 after us withdrawing itself from paris climate pact the financial aid india is supposed to get is very bleak then how india is going to clean its air is a major challenge and second is drinking water so with regard to water per capita availability has drastically reduced the major reasons are major reasons include industrial use increased pollution of the water bodies so providing for a safe drinking water to all the poor people is going to be a future challenge for india and coming to food security lack of income security to the farmer and then consistent policies from the government erratic monsoons all these have reduced the availability of grain as population is increasing and availability of grain is decreasing then there is a challenge ahead now government of india has to focus on these three objectives which are stated a century back without this then the swaraj or independence do not have any meaning so in this part of the article the author talks about deviation of the present government so the present government is more trying to polarize people and talking about identity uniform civil code etc 
rather than focusing on the issues which are important which are uh, going to make a difference to the people that's what the author says but this take this part of the article i'm not going to look into but major part the gandhi ji's meaning of swaraj we can use that in our essay the task before cyril ram fosa the cyril ram fosa he is the president now of african national congress if you can remember that african national congress is the party of nelson mandela he was able to bring in a rainbow revolution in this divided country racially divided country and now his party under juma is said to be the most corrupt in the world what might be the reasons for this remember this for personal gains if institutions are undermined the long term damage it does to the country will be remarkable and second is capture of the state institutions by vested interests is dangerous always there has to be checks and balances for this not to happen the third if institutions created by the state are based on the philosophy of checks and balances even if one institute if one institution fails the other comes for rescue the south east uh, south african example proves that now juma's regime it was filled with corruption it is due to the business and politics nexus especially gupta brothers and their nexus with uh, the south african state missionary is clearly exposed the second aspect is um, the unholy nexus um, also has led to entire institutions to fail especially the independent constitutional institutions to fail but independent judiciary public prosecutor office these are able to stand to the president and finally it led uh, juma's ouster from the office that is what we need to understand from this by evidence alone here i am going to talk about the trial and criminal justice delivery system it is in the context of malegaon blast but we are not going to talk about uh, sadvi or mr lieutenant colonel or anyone just take the principle behind that any of the criminal justice system has to be guided by evidence and facts if not the justice will be denied or justice and over jealous police are to the extent delayed judiciary all these costly litigation process all these can deprive the justice to an individual so these are the points we need to carry for a wider pool this is about clinical trials understand india is becoming a hub of clinical trials clinical trial involves a verification of a drug or a procedure before it was put into practice there are various steps in this first it has to be tested through tested in animals then among the people then among the healthy individuals like that it goes on so india clinical indian clinical trials are questioned by various european authorities for their standards recently ranbaxy trials gvk trials all these have come under question so there is also an element of bioethics coming in conflict with uh, the medicine over here so first is most of the people who are volunteering for uh, clinical trials are the poor people because an element of incentive is involved money is paid for them one important step in this studies is bioequivalent studies uh, which involves healthy individuals so most of these people are getting involved with themselves uh, at the bioequivalent studies here the moral issue is this every person has to be informed about the damages that trial can cause but most of these people are illiterate and they are most of the times they are not been kept informed about the consequences of trial and second aspect is a, the volunteer shall give all the facts about his health condition before he has been put for a test if not the test may get a wrong result it can yield false positives or false negatives so the clinical trial genuinity of the volunteer is very much important but many a times volunteers hide their fact of disease conditions uh, existing health disorders for the fear that uh, they may lose the incentive these all making the clinical trial scenario com uh, complex uh, and not very uh, effective in india that's how i can put it as these are the points which we need to note uh, in this particular part 
Now let's come to open it, open page. Reality bites Britain. So Brexit has happened, and uh, the process has to be completed. The Britons they are coming to reality now. The first thing is Northern Ireland is part of UK. It has a boundary with the Ireland. So in these circumstances, this Ireland is uh, part of European Union. How this boundary has to be managed is one bigger question. And second is, the Britain industry is asking for a transit phase to accommodate themselves to the changes. What EU is saying is, in any transit phase, UK shall be abiding all the European Union norms and conditions. And third thing, European the UK wants to go ahead with the trade deals with Commonwealth countries. but commonwealth countries demand for relaxed immigration laws which the uk is not interested to provide for and finally the financial industry or financial sector in in london is expected to get certain remedies or certain subsidies from european union but european union dismissed that no such benefits or concessions will be provided to london's financial sector so these are all creating huge problems for uk after brexit liberation of goa you know this operation vijay if i am not wrong it was conducted in 1961 to liberate goa now goan liberation from portuguese is itself a victory to india because entire west is opposed to this but west also criticized india being a preacher of non violence has forcibly taken up a territory so that's why it is stated as an indian hypocrisy by the western media so capture of goa that's one thing let's get into the news page maoist incident fewer in 2017 government data shows what can be the reasons for fewer maoist incidents many of the people attracted to maoism due to its ideological flavor today ideological flavor is more replaced by extortion money gaining by the leadership it means the quality of leadership has weakened and second is developmental programs are able to make their inroads into the naxal affected areas and democracy is also able to make its inroads few days back there is an article from chatisgarh an ig of chatisgarh wrote the article how the government is involved with proactive governance and policing in the naxal affected areas to dissuade the people from joining uh, extremists and the third thing is it can be a strategy too why is it a strategy because in the existing uh, developmental model obviously in certain areas the tribal people are getting displaced so this displacement without proper rehabilitation has to attract more people towards maoism but that is not happening or is it happening or and the things are remaining silent so that they can strengthen themselves that is another dilemma over here and then jadhav's incarceration is reminiscent of kutis i like this article but this is not very much relevant to our examination the name of the book this autobiography self exile no regrets that book i am going to buy and read about the next is vacancies and memorandum of procedure uncertainty stare at supreme court the vacancies are increasing at the supreme court now previously we had collegium system and to replace this collegium system through 99th constitutional amendment act we got national judicial appointments commission this ngac it uh, was declared as unconstitutional by the supreme court and in the place of collegium to improve transparency and participation of wider sections of society supreme court has recommended for a new procedure based on this memorandum of procedure was designed by the government which is not yet accepted by the supreme court because of these delays there is more uncertainty in the appointment of judges and it is bringing the judicial work to a grinding halt as the appointments to higher judiciary are being delayed more channels to train teachers national institute of open schooling is going to take up the training of school teachers 
and the right to education act is expected to be implemented effectively based on this this is what the article is in the last page i gave you the notes which will which will be available to you at likes.in/civilsprep and thank you very much all the best